Have you ever felt like your words just aren't getting you anywhere? Like you're saying all the right things, but nothing's changing? Well, get ready for a mind-blowing idea that could turn everything around for you. Louise Hay, the famous self-help guru, shared a powerful secret that's not about what you say, but about the energy you give off. This isn't just another trick or tip. It's a whole new way of looking at how we interact with the world. And the best part? You can start using it today and see the magic happen in your own life. Now here's the thing. If you don't get this idea, you might keep spinning your wheels, trying to make positive changes, but not seeing results. It's frustrating, right? You're doing all the things you're supposed to do, saying positive affirmations, setting goals, trying to think positively. But somehow, it's just not clicking. That's because there's a missing piece to the puzzle, and it's all about the energy you're putting out into the world. Think about it. How many times have you said something like, I'm happy, or I'm confident, but deep down, you didn't really feel it. That disconnect between your words and your true feelings is what's tripping you up. It's time to look deeper and understand how you're really communicating with the world around you. It's not just about what comes out of your mouth. It's about the vibe you're giving off. So what exactly did Louise Hay mean when she talked about using vibration instead of words. Let's break it down. Hay believed that everything in the universe is energy, including our thoughts and feelings. When we speak, it's not just the words that matter, but the energy behind them. This energy, or vibration, is what really communicates our intentions and beliefs to the world. Imagine you're trying to convince a friend to go to a new restaurant. You might say, oh yeah, it'll be great. But if your tone is flat and your body language is hesitant, your friend will pick up on that energy more than your words. They might even say, you don't sound very excited about it. That's because they're reading your vibration, not just listening to your words. Now let's apply this to bigger things in life. Maybe you're trying to attract more money or find a new job. You might be saying all the right things. I am worthy of abundance, or I am confident in my skills. But if deep down you're feeling scared, doubtful, or unworthy, guess what? That's the vibration you're actually sending out into the world. And according to Louise Hay, that's the vibration the universe responds to. This idea is pretty powerful when you think about it. It means that to really change our lives, we need to focus on changing our inner state, our feelings, beliefs, and energy, not just the words we say out loud. It's about aligning our inner world with what we want to see in our outer world. But how do we actually do this? How can we change our vibration to match what we want to attract? Well. That's where things get really interesting. It's not about forcing yourself to feel something you don't. Instead, it's about gently shifting your energy through various practices and mindset changes. For example, instead of just saying, I am wealthy, you might spend time really imagining what it feels like to be financially secure. How would you walk? How would you breathe? What would your day-to-day -day life look like? As you practice this visualization, you start to embody that energy of abundance. Your vibration begins to match what you're trying to attract. Or let's say, you want to improve your relationships? Rather than just repeating, I am loved, you could focus on cultivating feelings of love and appreciation for the people already in your life. As you raise your vibration of love and gratitude, you naturally start to attract more loving relationships. The beauty of this approach 
is that it's not about pretending or faking it. It's about genuinely shifting your inner state. And the great thing is, as you start to make these shifts, you often begin to see small changes in your external world pretty quickly. These little wins can then boost your belief and raise your vibration even more, creating a positive cycle. Now, you might be thinking, this all sounds great, but it's easier said than done. And you're right. Changing your vibration isn't always easy, especially if you've been stuck in negative patterns for a long time. But the good news is, there are lots of practical ways to start shifting your energy. Things like meditation, gratitude practices, visualization, and even physical exercise can all help to raise your vibration. One simple technique Louise Hay often recommended was mirror work. This involves looking at yourself in the mirror each day and saying loving, positive statements to yourself. But remember, it's not just about the words. It's about really feeling the love and acceptance as you say them. At first, it might feel awkward or even silly. But over time, this practice can help you shift your vibration to one of self-love and positivity. Another powerful tool is to pay attention to how different activities and environments affect your energy. Do certain people or places make you feel lighter and more positive? Spend more time there? Do some situations consistently bring your energy down? Look for ways to limit your exposure or change your response to them. The key is to be patient and gentle with yourself as you explore this new way of interacting with the world. Remember, you're not trying to force anything. You're simply aligning your inner state with what you want to experience in life. As Louise Hay often said, it's only a thought, and a thought can be changed. As you start to work with this idea of vibration, you might notice some interesting things happening. Maybe you'll find yourself naturally drawn to more positive people or opportunities. Or perhaps you'll start handling challenges with more ease and grace. These are all signs that your vibration is shifting and aligning with what you truly want in life. But here's an important point. This isn't about being positive all the time or denying your true feelings. In fact, Trying to force yourself to feel good when you don't can actually lower your vibration because it's not authentic. Instead, it's about acknowledging where you are and then gently guiding yourself towards a higher vibration. For example, if you're feeling sad or angry, don't try to push those feelings away. Instead, acknowledge them, allow yourself to feel them, and then ask yourself, what would help me feel a little better right now? Maybe it's taking a walk in nature, calling a friend, or doing some deep breathing. As you take care of yourself in this way, you naturally start to shift your vibration. This approach can be especially powerful when it comes to big life changes or long-standing issues. Let's say you've been struggling with your weight for years. Instead of just saying affirmations about being thin, you could focus on raising your vibration around health and self-care. What would it feel like to truly love and appreciate your body? How would you treat yourself if you really believed you deserve the best health possible? As you start to embody these feelings, you might find yourself naturally drawn to healthier choices. You might enjoy moving your body more or find yourself craving nutritious foods. The change comes from within rather than being forced from the outside. Or maybe you're dealing with financial stress. Instead of just repeating, money comes easily to me while feeling panicked about bills, you could focus on cultivating a vibration of abundance and gratitude. 
What can you appreciate about your current financial situation, even if it's challenging? How can you generate feelings of generosity and plenty, even in small ways? This might look like expressing heartfelt thanks for the money you do have, or finding ways to be generous even on a tight budget, like volunteering your time. As you shift your vibration around money, you might start noticing new opportunities or creative solutions to your financial challenges. The power of this approach is that it works on multiple levels. Yes, it can help you attract more of what you want in life. But more importantly, it changes your experience of life right now. When you're vibrating at a higher level, you feel better in your day-to-day -day life. You handle challenges with more grace. You appreciate the good things more deeply. In essence, you're not just changing your external circumstances, you're changing your entire experience of life. This is why Louise Hay's idea is so revolutionary. It's not just another self-help technique or positive thinking trick. It's a fundamental shift in how we interact with the world around us. It recognizes that we are energetic beings in an energetic universe and that our inner state is constantly communicating with and shaping our reality. But here's the really exciting part. As you start to work with this idea, you begin to realize how much power you actually have. You're not at the mercy of external circumstances or other people's actions. You have the ability to shift your own vibration and in doing so, to shift your entire experience of life. This doesn't mean that challenges won't come up or that everything will magically become perfect. But it does mean that you have a powerful tool for navigating life's ups and downs. When you understand how to work with your own energy, you become more resilient, more joyful, and more able to create the life you truly want. So, how can you start putting this into practice right away? Here are a few simple steps you can take. Start paying attention to how you feel throughout the day. Notice what raises your vibration and what lowers it. When you catch yourself in a low vibration, feeling stressed, anxious, angry, etc., pause and ask yourself, what would help me feel a little better right now? Practice visualizing what you want in life, not just in terms of what it looks like, but how it feels. Really embody those positive feelings. Experiment with different techniques like meditation, gratitude journaling, or affirmations. Remember, it's not just about the words. It's about the feeling behind them. Be patient and gentle with yourself. Shifting your vibration is a practice, and it takes time. As you start working with these ideas, you might be surprised at how quickly you start seeing changes in your life. Maybe you'll notice more synchronicities or lucky coincidences. Perhaps you'll find yourself handling stress more easily or attracting more positive people into your life. But even more importantly, you'll likely start feeling better day to day. You'll have a tool for shifting your mood and your experience of life, no matter what's happening around you. And that, according to Louise Hay, is where true transformation begins. Remember, this isn't about perfection. It's not about being positive all the time or never having negative thoughts. It's about becoming aware of your vibration and learning how to shift it in ways that serve you better. It's about recognizing your own power to shape your experience of life. So, are you ready to try it out? Are you willing to explore this new way of interacting with the world? It might feel a bit strange at first, especially if you're used to focusing mainly on your thoughts and words. But give it a chance. Pay attention to your energy 
to how you feel throughout the day. Start experimenting with ways to shift your vibration. You might be amazed at what starts to happen, not only in terms of what you attract into your life, but in how you feel day to day. Because ultimately, that's what this is all about, not just changing your circumstances, but changing your entire experience of life. Louise Hay believed that we all have the power to create lives we love. And this idea that our vibration shapes our reality is a key part of that. It puts the power back in our hands. It reminds us that we're not just passive observers of our lives, but active creators. So why not give it a try? Start today. Pay attention to your vibration. Experiment with ways to shift it. See what happens when you focus not just on your words, but on the energy behind them. You might just unlock a whole new level of transformation in your life. Remember, as Louise Hay often said, you have the power to heal your life and you need to know that. Your vibration is a powerful tool in that healing process. It's time to start using it consciously and see the magic unfold in your life. The power of vibration more than just words have you ever noticed how some people seem to light up a room just by walking in? Or how certain places make you feel instantly calm and happy? That's the power of vibration at work. It's not about what these people say or what's written on the walls of these places. It's about the energy they give off. This is what Louise Hay was talking about when she said to use vibration, not just words. Think about the universe as a big ocean of energy. Everything in it, including us, is like a little wave in that ocean. Our thoughts, feelings, and beliefs create our own unique wave or vibration. And here's the cool part. This vibration doesn't just stay inside us. It ripples out and interacts with everything around us. When we talk about raising our vibration, we're not just using fancy spiritual words. We're talking about actually changing the energy we put out into the world. It's like tuning a radio to a different station. When you raise your vibration, you're tuning into a different frequency of life. One that's usually more positive, peaceful, and in line with what you want. Now you might be thinking, but I've been saying positive things and using affirmations. Isn't that enough? Well, here's where it gets interesting. Words are important, but they're only part of the story. Have you ever said, I'm fine, when you really weren't? Or told someone, good luck, but didn't really mean it? Your words said one thing, but your energy said something completely different. This is why sometimes people can say all the right things, but still not see changes in their lives. Maybe you've been telling yourself, I am confident every day, but deep down you still feel scared and unsure. Or you might say, I attract abundance, but constantly worry about money. In these cases, your words and your vibration are out of sync. It's like trying to paddle a boat in two different directions. Your words are going one way, but your true feelings and beliefs, your vibration, are going another. And guess which one is stronger? Yep, it's the vibration. That's what the universe really responds to. This doesn't mean affirmations and positive self-talk are useless. Not at all. They can be really helpful. But they work best when your inner vibration matches the words you're saying. When you align your energy with your words, that's when the real magic happens. So, how do we actually raise our vibration? The good news is, there are lots of simple ways to do it. And the even better news is, as you practice these, you'll start to feel better right away, even before you see big changes in your outer life. 
One of the easiest ways to raise your vibration is through gratitude. When you focus on what you're thankful for, you automatically shift your energy to a more positive state. Try starting each day by thinking of three things you're grateful for. They don't have to be big things. Maybe you're thankful for your cozy bed or the sunshine or your morning coffee. The key is to really feel the gratitude, not just think about it. Another powerful tool is meditation. Now don't worry if you've tried meditation before and found it hard. There are many different ways to meditate and it doesn't have to mean sitting still for hours. Even just taking a few deep breaths and focusing on the present moment can help shift your energy. As you practice, you might notice that you feel calmer and more centered throughout your day. Physical movement is also great for raising your vibration. This doesn't mean you have to do intense workouts if that's not your thing. Dancing to your favorite music, taking a walk in nature, or doing some gentle stretching can all help shift your energy. Pay attention to how different types of movement make you feel and do more of what feels good to you. Surrounding yourself with high vibration things can also make a big difference. This might mean spending time in nature, listening to uplifting music, or reading inspiring books. It could also mean decluttering your space and filling it with things that make you happy. Even small changes like putting fresh flowers on your desk or using essential oils you love can help raise your vibration. Another important aspect of raising your vibration is paying attention to your thoughts and beliefs. Our minds are constantly chattering, and a lot of that chatter can be negative. Start to notice your thought patterns. When you catch yourself thinking something negative, gently redirect your thoughts to something more positive. This takes practice, but over time, you can actually change your default thought patterns. Remember, raising your vibration isn't about forcing yourself to be happy all the time. It's about gradually shifting your energy to a more positive state. It's okay to have negative emotions. In fact, acknowledging and processing them in a healthy way is part of maintaining a high vibration. The goal is to create a general trend towards more positive energy. As you work on raising your vibration, you might start to notice some changes. You might find yourself feeling more optimistic, even in challenging situations. You might start attracting more positive people and experiences into your life. You might even notice that things you've been wanting start to show up more easily. But here's the really cool part. Even if you don't see big external changes right away, you'll likely feel better day to day. That's because when you raise your vibration, you're essentially raising your baseline level of well-being. Life becomes more enjoyable, even in small ways. Now let's talk about something really fascinating, the mirror principle. This idea says that the world around us is like a big mirror reflecting back to us the energy we put out. It's like the old saying, what goes around comes around but on an energetic level. Here's how it works. The vibration you put out into the world through your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs attracts experiences and people that match that vibration. If you're constantly worried and fearful, you might find yourself in more situations that make you feel afraid. If you're generally positive and expecting good things, you're more likely to notice and attract positive experiences. This doesn't mean that bad things never happen to positive people or that every challenge in your life is somehow your fault. Life is complex and many factors influence what happens to us. But our vibration does play a big role in how we experience life and what we tend to attract. 
Think of it like this. Have you ever had a day where you woke up on the wrong side of the bed and then everything seemed to go wrong? Maybe you spilled your coffee, got stuck in traffic, and had arguments with people. Now think of a day when you woke up feeling great. On those days, doesn't it seem like good things keep happening? That's the mirror principle in action. The exciting thing about understanding this principle is that it puts a lot of power in your hands. By consciously working on your vibration, you can start to change what the mirror of life reflects back to you. It's not about controlling every little thing that happens, but about setting the general tone for your experiences. For example, if you want more loving relationships in your life, focus on cultivating feelings of love and appreciation. Practice being more loving and appreciative in your current relationships. As you do this, you raise your love vibration and you're likely to start attracting more loving experiences and people. Or let's say you want to improve your financial situation. Instead of focusing on lack and worry, try to generate feelings of abundance and gratitude for the resources you do have. This doesn't mean ignoring practical steps like budgeting or looking for better job opportunities, but it does mean approaching these tasks from a more positive, abundant mindset. The mirror principle also explains why it's so important to be aware of your self-talk and beliefs. The things you consistently think and believe about yourself are part of your vibration and the world will reflect those back to you. If you constantly think, I'm not good enough, you might find yourself in situations that seem to confirm that belief. But if you can shift to believing, I am worthy and capable, you'll likely start to see evidence of that instead. This principle can be really empowering, but it's important not to use it to blame yourself for everything negative in your life. Remember, we're not in control of everything that happens, but we are in control of how we respond to life and the energy we choose to put out. That's where our power lies. As you work with the mirror principle, try to approach it with curiosity and openness. Notice how your inner state seems to influence your outer experiences. Look for those little reflections of your vibration in your daily life. As you become more aware of this connection, you can start to consciously shape your vibration to create more of what you want in life. A practical exercise to feel the difference. Let's dive into a simple yet powerful exercise that can help you really feel the difference between using just words and using vibration. This exercise will show you firsthand how your energy can shift and how that shift can affect your experience. Find a quiet place where you won't be disturbed for a few minutes. Sit comfortably and take a few deep breaths to center yourself. Now, think of a goal you have or something you want to manifest in your life. It could be anything, better health, a new job, a loving relationship, or financial abundance. First, we'll try the words only approach. Say an affirmation related to your goal out loud. For example, if your goal is better health, you might say, I am healthy and full of energy. Repeat this a few times, but don't put much feeling into it. Just say the words flatly, like you're reading a grocery list. Now, pause and notice how you feel. Do you feel inspired? Energized? Probably not much, right? Next, we'll try the vibration approach. Close your eyes and really imagine what it would feel like to have achieved your goal. If it's better health, Imagine how your body would feel, strong, energetic, vibrant. Imagine how you'd move, how you'd breathe. Feel the joy and gratitude of being in perfect health. 
Once you've built up this feeling, say your affirmation again. But this time, say it with all the emotion and energy of already having achieved your goal. Really feel it as you say it. Now check in with yourself. Notice the difference in how you feel. You might feel more energized, more positive, maybe even a bit excited. That's the power of aligning your vibration with your words. This exercise shows how much more powerful our communication becomes when we match our energy to our words. It's not just about what we say, but about the vibration we're putting out as we say it. To really understand how this works in everyday life, let's look at some real examples of people who've used this principle to create positive changes. Take Sarah, for instance. She had always struggled with her weight and had tried every diet under the sun. But no matter what she did, she couldn't seem to keep the weight off. Then she learned about using vibration instead of just words. Instead of just saying affirmations about being thin, Sarah started to focus on how it would feel to be healthy and comfortable in her body. She imagined herself moving with ease, enjoying nutritious foods, and feeling energetic. She practiced feeling gratitude for her body, even the parts she had previously disliked. At first it felt strange, but as she kept at it, she noticed her attitude towards her body and health starting to shift. She found herself naturally drawn to healthier foods and enjoying movement more. Over time, not only did she lose weight, but she developed a much healthier relationship with her body and food. Then there's Mike, who had been stuck in a job he hated for years. He would say things like, I want a better job, or I deserve more. But deep down, he didn't really believe it was possible. His vibration was one of frustration and hopelessness. When Mike learned about the power of vibration, he decided to try a new approach. Instead of focusing on how much he hated his current job, he started to imagine how it would feel to do work he loved. He visualized himself waking up excited to go to work, feeling valued and fulfilled. As he practiced this, he noticed his attitude at his current job starting to improve. He felt more confident and started taking on new responsibilities. Within a few months, a new opportunity opened up within his company, one that aligned perfectly with what he had been visualizing. These stories show how changing your vibration can lead to real, tangible changes in your life. It's not about ignoring reality or pretending everything is perfect. It's about shifting your energy to align with what you want to create. Remember, everyone's journey is different. Some people might see quick results, while for others, the changes might be more gradual. The key is to be patient and consistent. Keep working on your vibration and trust that things are shifting, even if you can't see the results right away. As we wrap up this exploration of Louise Hay's powerful idea about using vibration instead of just words, let's take a moment to reflect on what we've learned. We've discovered that our energy, our vibration, is constantly communicating with the world around us. It's not just about what we say, but about the energy behind our words and thoughts. By learning to work with our vibration, we can start to shape our experiences and attract more of what we want in life. We've explored practical ways to raise our vibration from gratitude practices to visualization techniques. We've learned about the mirror principle and how the world reflects our inner state back to us. And we've seen real life examples of how shifting your vibration can lead to positive changes. Remember, this isn't about being perfect or positive all the time. 
It's about becoming more aware of your energy and learning how to shift it in ways that serve you better. It's about aligning your inner world with what you want to create in your outer world. As you move forward from here, I encourage you to stay curious and open. Pay attention to your vibration throughout the day. Notice what raises it and what lowers it. Experiment with different ways of shifting your energy. Be patient with yourself as you practice this new way of interacting with the world. You might be amazed at what starts to happen as you become more conscious of your vibration. You might find yourself feeling happier and more peaceful, even amidst life's challenges. You might start attracting more positive experiences and relationships. You might discover a sense of empowerment as you realize how much influence you have over your life experience. Remember, as Louise Hay often said, you have the power to heal your life. By working with your vibration, you're tapping into that power in a profound way. You're not just changing your words or your thoughts, you're changing your entire way of being in the world. So, are you ready to give it a try? Are you willing to explore this new way of creating positive change in your life? Start today. Pay attention to your vibration. Practice raising it and watch as the magic unfolds in your life. Thank you for joining me on this journey of discovery. Here's to the power of vibration and the amazing potential it holds for transforming our lives.